Do we have Stefan with us? Yes, hello, can you hear me? We can indeed, hello, welcome to the show. Hello, um, my question is more like, uh, in a broader sense, um, I, I realized that due to Thunderfoot's videos, for example, um, people don't use scientific arguments anymore, or not as much, and are proceeding to the philosophical ones, because maybe they're harder to realize that they're bullshit. Do you think that's the case? It's something that I've been arguing for some months, um, that, you know, we saw when the likes of Venom Fang X started, uh, he'd make all sorts of claims, uh, parroted exactly uh, from uh, Kent Hoven, about uh, scientific issues. And Thunder's very first Why Do People Laugh at Creationist videos debunked uh, three of the arguments he's put forward. And I agree with, I don't think you see that many, that many people trying to advance those sorts of arguments because I think they have been utterly debunked. Occasionally, you still get Eric doing You've it, but not on YouTube. You've seen was Zulu. Yeah, Ian Juby, that's the guy. Um, and he makes all of the uh, scientifically inept uh, arguments with a vengeance. Is he the Australian guy with the funny hat? Uh, I think he might be. He's Canadian. He lives in uh, Canada now, but uh, um, yeah, he he's got the funny hat and gives talks about dinosaurs and how you can tell that um, if the eggs were laid in a straight line, then that meant the flood was coming because they used to lay them in circles otherwise. Um, and they were running. More... The point was that they laid the eggs <laughs> as they were running. Uh, Which, that would have been quite a sight to see. <laughs> yeah, but, but do you think? Sorry, do, sorry, do, do you think this is this is getting less frequent? Um, I don't think um, the market share on the viral media is fairly well established, but I. I think in terms of the impact this has on the wider society is relatively minor. These things take uh, decades to bleed through. So, um, of the arguments that are put onto YouTube, um, the creationists largely get um, routed on. The, uh, the counter videos are usually ten times better, uh, much more factual, um, but you, you, you go to places like Answers in Genesis. They have entire websites dedicated to essentially pseudoscientific bullshit, um, which allows you to believe in God. And all of these organize and they, 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 there are hordes of them. The amount of money that is put into uh, religion in America. Um, is crazy. I wouldn't be surprised if it's comparable to the educational budget of America. Yeah. So, so you would say that's a perception error on my side that the scientific arguments are getting less? Um, no, on, on YouTube you're right, um, but YouTube... Uh, well, what, what country are you from? Germany. Germany. Uh, yeah, so I mean, um, in Germany Actually, Germany is an oddball because you still have uh, a religion. Um, that there's the religion stops people from opening stores on Sunday. Still in Germany, yeah? I you can don't only pro open. Probably, I don't know. I think you can only open gas stations and pharmacies on a Sunday. Um, yeah, I've, but, I've but they've also recently banned um, circumcision as well. So as you say, it is somewhat odd. Yeah. Yay! We are on the forefront of banning circumcision. Yeah. Um, in Germany. The one thing you didn't ban, of course, is uh, people leaving Germany to be circumcised and then being brought back into Germany. But uh, hey, it, it's a start. What's been and What's been the general response um, from, in particular, the Jewish community? Um, to the to that new Shit. legislation, shitstorm. <laughs> no, and uh, 
it's a really sad thing. Like uh, in the parliament, all parties just a few weeks after the um, decision from the courts, all parties said that no, this is this is not right and we will uh, in fall we will bring on uh, a new legislation that specifically allows circumcision again so it's, wow. it's a brief a brief pause um that's a shame so it's it's going to be basically it's going to be reintroduced or it's going to be legalized well we're trying to fight it so i don't know and the I think the tricky part on the legislation will be to uh, formulate the, the law in such a way that male circumcision will be allowed, but female circum circumcision will be still be uh, forbidden. And I think this will be a very tricky part because uh, how do you phrase the law exactly to achieve that? But actually, that's not, not I, I, our I think problem. it's actually quite straightforward. Um, there's a distinction between a man and a woman, and you put that into the legislation. Yeah, but I think... Call me uh, old-fashioned, but it seems to be a fairly straightforward answer to it. Yeah, but I, I think um, due to um, same rights for men and for women in every other part of, of, of the law, it would be, I think, probably something uh, against the constitution or something. Concordance. I, I, I want to bring in something. This is, I don't know if, if anyone else reads, reads this blog. It's called Why Evolution is True. Um, I'm, I'm trying to recall the, the author. <laughs> uh, it's um, Jerry Coyne. Jerry Coyne, excellent, excellent guy, uh, biologist. But one of the posts is called The Outrageous Subsidies to Religion in America. And, and I just want to follow up on something Thunder started down that road. Um, there was a young man putting together his PhD dissertation on the sociology of religious subsidies. Uh, and in case you don't know, that, that includes things like the fact that they don't pay taxes. So that amounts to a subsidy. Uh, there also, there's also the parsonage exemption, which means that the house that a pastor lives in can, can be exempted from taxation which can amount to a lot of money. Um, but based on his tally of the things he was able to estimate, based on uh, population numbers, tax uh, forms, you know, the, the, the information reported by the tax office, it came out to about $71 billion uh, per year. Uh, if you want to compare that, the subsidies to agriculture are about $180 billion. So about, and, you know, a little less than half of the subsidies to all the agriculture in the, in the country uh, are the easily attributable subsidies that go directly to religious uh, organizations. Maybe you, that, do you, sorry. Sorry, that, that includes $35 billion in federal income tax subsidy, uh, $6 billion in state income tax, uh, $26 billion in property tax uh, exemption, uh, 41 million in investment taxes because any investments they make, uh, faith-based initiatives which started um, before Bush but were really expanded under uh, Bush two, uh, amount to about two billion dollars a year, and the parsonage subsidies about a billion dollars a year, uh, and of course some some parsonage exemptions actually cover multiple houses for a single church. And what will happen is, you know, the, the, the head of the megachurch will own a home in Aspen, you know, up in the mountains for skiing, and he'll own a home in Florida for, you know, vacations, and he'll count each of those as being independent parsonage um, homes for, you know, the assistant pastor, which also happens to be his son. You know, those, those kinds of situations where these people lead very exorbitant tax-free lives um, on the taxpayer's expense. So atheists pay the tax and it goes to subsidize the, the megachurch, the televangelist, uh, as well as the local uh, small church. The number in Germany is 20 billion per year. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just curious as to uh, how this would actually pan out if you were to have a religious tradition that involved, say, cutting off the uh, little toe of the baby. 
um, you know, it's a sign of uh, goodwill to your god or something. Um, you know, chopping bits off your babies is um, pretty messed up. I would just be curious as to if they're going to go through all this palaver to actually allow doctors to, um, to, you know, to go from being allowed to not being allowed to circumcise babies to being able to circumcise babies on a religious grounds. Well, what if my religion actually involves um, or requires me to cut toes off my baby? I have to say, Thunder, that if I was a woman, I think I would prefer to have a toe cut off than my clitoris. Absolutely. Um, in, in Germany, there, well, due to the shitstorm in, circ in the circumcision debate, um, it, it's the, uh, the case that um, the doctors can, could have decided before that they don't do religious circum circumcision. So you cannot force them to do it. And now the first ones can say, like, now it's against the law and we, w we, won't, we won't do it. Yeah, Sam Harris had a, a point uh, sort of similar to this and not that far off actual Christian theology, which is, uh, you know, it is uh, better to pluck out your eye um, than allow it to, uh, it's better to pluck out your eye and go to heaven than to... Um, keep on sinning with your eye um, and if you had a religious uh, belief that took this very much to heart um, then you gouge out the eye of your baby or just one of them um, you know, this is the sort of thing that you might do to show how truly dedicated you are to your God Yeah, you, you maybe keep them with one eye but you, where do you draw the lines about how much of the baby you're allowed to cut off um, for it to be permissible as religion? It's an interesting question and not one I suspect that we're going to resolve on this show today. But, uh, Stefan, on the basis that I've got more callers um, for this show than I have, um, I think, for any previous show, including uh, when we had Richard Dawkins on the show, I am going to move on. But thank you very much indeed for your call. Okay, thank you, bye. Now, I'm going to go, try and go back to Brian because I'm intrigued to know why he was so excited that Concordance was on the show. Uh, we, have to, <laughs> we have to have closure on this. Uh, Shelby, I will be coming to you next. Uh, then I'll be taking um, 13 Heathens and then I'll get around to uh, uh, responding to the other contact requests that are coming in. Hopefully, Brian will be joining us. Uh, I think so this time. Got me better? Oh, much better, yes. We can't oh, see you, wonderful. but we can hear you perfectly. Yeah, I don't. Oh, oh, well, at least you can hear me. That's the important part. Uh, thanks for having me on and uh, maybe a little uh, a little shift from topic here, but uh, at Concordance, I'm really glad you're here for this one. Uh, I Why? To get... Why? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry before you drop. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to get some input from you guys and Thunder, too, uh, with regards to sociobiology. Now, understand, I, I'm not a biologist myself, uh, so my understanding here is completely layman. But I'm wondering if, uh, particularly Concordance, what, what do you think? Does sociobiology, uh, a la Edward O. Wilson, can it give us some insight into, say, human morality? Can, can we look at that and, and can it help us understand that? Because if it can, there's some huge things there we could look for. Yes, clearly. There, there are some things that we can look at. It, and not even just sociobiology. We can look at the endocrinology of our attitudes and the physical neurobiology of our attitudes. And we really are starting to cross that line between the physical basis of belief. You know, it, one of the things we talked about when we had... Um, Oh, what was our evolutionary psychologist friend? Um, Andy Thompson. Andy was the fact that when people are asked what they think God believes, the parts of their brain light up that are the same for introspection. In other words, they're asking themselves, what do I believe? Uh, and then they're transferring that over to what they think God would believe. Uh, 
that kind of information is awfully interesting to me because it, it says when people are thinking about you know god's wrath for gay people you know or uh how they feel about gay marriage is informed by scripture that's probably not true it's probably much more about their own preconceptions and their own uh conservative or liberal viewpoints i i think that a lot can be gained from that now specifically sociobiology uh where you're talking mostly about studying simpler systems can teach us something very important about uh emergent behaviors in other words, if you take one ant and you study that one ant, you would never understand how a colony of ants behaves because you cannot derive that strictly from the ant. Uh, where you have to study the interactions of the ants, when you have a certain number of them, they become a colony. And they have new properties. And you cannot isolate those behaviors. You can't reduce the behavior of a colony down to a single ant. Uh, the same thing is true in social situations. The reductionist approach has been very unfruitful in understanding human institutions. You, you can't isolate down individual members of a group to understand how the group functions. Um, that's true also of neurons. You can't take a single neuron and understand how a brain functions. And that seems to be an approach that some religious apologists think that when we start to trace the physical behavior of the brain and trying to extrapolate from that to why we believe things or why our brains are unreliable, you, you can't get there from here. You can't take a single neuron, you can't take the simple physical structure of how these things behave and derive from it the elaborate behaviors that go into social institutions like religion or uh, politics or whatever it may be. Sorry, that so, was a long and rough answer. And sorry there. So you're saying it, we we could look at things like uh, political views uh, and marriage uh, marriage uh, views, yes, or or that it can't answer that kind of stuff. No, it absolutely can. Uh, but what, okay. what we've learned, what we've learned from ants and from uh, social animals is that behaviors are far more complex than the individual members that are interacting. Right? And I, I think that's the most important thing that has arisen from that, because people wanted to understand the brain, um, and they thought that a single brain would be good enough. And, and the field of neurobiology right now is about integrating social networks and the physical neurobiology of the brain. So that's, that was the missing component for the last 20, 30 years. And it's the reason why a lot of people are skeptical of evolutionary psychology is there were two different schools of thought. There was the, the group selection, which is, is widely discredited in general, and then there were the, the people who were looking at the very reductionist neurobiology. And you, neither one of them was terribly productive on their own. It, it's the matching up of the two. It's the integration of um, social structure and neurobiology that's finally starting to yield fruit. So I, yeah, yes, it can be very productive. Okay, and, and that really was my question, uh, or where the root of my question was, and because a lot of the, um, the anti-sociobiology talk that I hear is mostly from the religious side, where they want to take it to the eventual extreme, you know, uh, uh, genocide and stuff like that. But since Edward O. Wilson... I hadn't really seen, or there's not really a lot of stuff that I've seen in the field where they're studying it uh, seriously. But I get from what you're saying, and that's why I'm glad for your input, that it is gaining more uh, relevance in the study field, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to look at what I'm talking about specifically, you can look at uh, fMRI, which is functional magnetic resonance imaging of the brain. Okay. fMRI was like voodoo. Right? No one could make sense of, you know, parts of the brain would light up and you could never reproduce it with a second person, right? It was each, each person's brain appeared to be wired independently. But when you take groups of people that have some sort of relation to each other, it starts to make a lot more sense. Um, that's, it's way out of my field, but that's, well, that's the impression I get. Well, actually, and one of the, the reasons I was glad, because your recent, uh, your recent two-parter there, what was it, uh, human race or mm -hmm. whatever, where you, where you look at, 
Yeah, exactly. Um, I felt like it, it kind of a, it kind of worked towards this, but it fell short of what I was asking here. Yeah, there's, a, there's so much to talk about there, and, and obviously only a certain amount of time. I know, I know Thunder wants to comment. Yeah, yeah, I mean, very briefly, I think, obviously, that um, significant ahead roads are being made into the, the origin of what we call morality. Um, and some of it's fairly obvious if you just think about it from the practical point of view that um, if you're asked a question, um, someone you don't know, you're asked how they will behave. Um, under a certain set of circumstances. Well, you need a, a model in your mind of a generic person, and the model which you have the most uh, data on is yourself. So a lot of these things will be, or would be expected to be uh, essentially ego-based, that you base the behavior of unknown people on what you would do in their circumstances. Then you're going to add um, certain characteristics to this, like, you know, Bert is a moral person. Uh, how will Bert behave in such a, um, an instance? Or, you know, um, there's this God thing, and he's really moral. What would he do in these circumstances? Um, but uh, alluding to something you were saying towards the end, there's this whole spectrum of things that would go into the category of morality. Uh, you know, on one end you've got the killing babies, and on the other end you've got, you know, which language should we speak and what clothes should we wear. These are things right. that affect other people. And so there's this whole landscape um, going from the obvious to um, the th this very flat landscape where it really doesn't make that much difference whether you choose A or B. Um, and even if you understood everything completely, there will come a point where even if you understand what is the better way of doing things, there's no real tangible advantage in doing it one way or the other. You, know, you can have a, just a, a society that speaks uh, Latin uh, just as well as you can have one that speaks English. Hello, welcome to the show. Hello. Hi. What have you got for us today? Um... Is my microphone working? First it's working all? perfectly, yeah. Hey, all right, clearly. that's lovely. Yeah. Hi, I'm sorry I can't get my cam to work. I'm, I'm using Debian, which, yes. Um, all right. Try inserting the penguin into the right slot. That'll work on Debian. <sighs> I have no idea what Debian is, is, so I've, I've no idea. It's an operating but... system. Oh, okay. Yes, I'm, I can't quite get my Nerds. camera to work. That's, that's not working don't, right now. Don't worry about the camera. Um, All right. Um, thank you. Um, the thing I'd like to discuss is lately I've been seeing advertisements on the Internet for this uh, television show on the game show network called The American Bible Challenge. And I don't know if any of you have been seeing these advertisements online, but the basic premise is that um, religious groups will show up and answer uh, Bible trivia questions and... Um, and they, of course, compete for money, and I thought, wouldn't it be absolutely fantastic if some secular group showed up and basically kicked everyone's butts at this game show? And I, then I, I know who I would have as captain is with a team. <laughs> Dilla Hunty. Matt Dillahunty as captain, yeah. Go on. Sorry. And he'd be our and, ringer. Yes, yeah, and, I, and I, I was think... thinking... I'm sorry. No, do oh, carry God. on, Shelby. We're being very rude and talking over you. Do carry oh. on. I, I was thinking of um, I was thinking of your discussion earlier about the about the subsidies that religious groups get by government, but perhaps what would happen if some secular group showed up? Um, I I'm not sure they would even attempt to show these people on the television show. Uh, the audience is very very religious, and I thought you know even if a secular group knew what they were doing and did show up, who knows if they would even get on simply because of what the television network or what the audience would want. Do you think something like that would, would possibly happen if a secular group they tried to show up? They would never have secularists on the show, no. That's my view, but... Anyone mm -hmm. else? What, and, and who would you have on the team? W would they allow such a team to appear? And apart from the Hunty, which I think we probably all agree on, who else would you have on the team? There, there's Pastor M. I, I think it's Pastor M. There's a whole series of these from the... Uh, Oh, I think it's just called the Pastor Project. What's the, yeah, the one yes. where 
Um, it is. is it called the Pastor Project? Yes, and for those that are not familiar with it, it is a, a, an organization that has been set up, uh, including the uh, support of the Richard Dawkins Foundation, to assist pastors who have lost their faith. And after 20 years in the church, you lose your faith, you don't want to carry on the job. There aren't that yeah, many no, job it, it, opportunities it, 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 available to you, so they, they're encouraging... It's called the Clergy Project, not clergy. the Pastor Project. Sorry, yeah. Uh, but that's um, what it's but, all about, but no. Um, go on. So, yeah, there's a horde of people out there who have spent their entire life um, rotting. They've rotted their life away, basically, and they've got nothing to show for it other than extensive knowledge of the Bible and the ability to preach. Um, and so, yeah, all of a sudden, uh, we need the team atheism for... Um, what was this game? The second question. Again? What was, the second question was? What, do you think that uh, that team would actually be allowed to participate? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's difficult to think that you would have a clause saying that you must believe in the Bible. It doesn't matter if they've got a clause or not. These are theists. They're not going to have a secular actually, team. Actually, in which case, it doesn't matter. You can do that thing that James Randi did with the spoon benders. Right, you put them in as hardcore atheists, sorry, as hardcore Christians, and then when they win, they all declare that they're atheists. That would work. Team Scarlet A, I like it. <laughs> Nobody expects the Scarlet A. Concordance. I I don't I, I don't quite know what the point would be. I mean, it's it's not. <laughs> it, it's funny, but I mean, it isn't really isn't that good much. enough reason? Can we not just I mean, have uh, we could have a Harry again? Potter contest and no, and no one would, would necessarily, well, I don't know, some people might believe that Harry Potter really existed. I mean, you could certainly become an expert on um, Enkidu or whoever from the Babylonian mythos. Um, I assume the anthropologists know a lot about old books but don't believe the stories in them. I, 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 just, I'll I don't, a, I'll, I don't get the point. I'll have a bet with you. If, 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 if I'd love to see some of these uh, clips from these, this show when it does take place. I bet you they don't ask about Lot's daughters getting him drunk and having sex with him, for example. There will be certain passages of the Bible that they're not going to question them on. That's a good point. Shelby, what's your background? Were you a theist once? or? I was. I'm the granddaughter of an American Baptist minister, which um, the tax break thing I, I was very interested in because growing up, my, my grandfather made very, very little money. His wife never finished high school. It is a long story with my grandparents. So basically, they had very little money and did not get tax breaks for anything. So hearing hearing all of this is big news to me. And, and you, they you themselves could, you were... Could, you could have had a holiday home in uh, New Hampshire or whatever. <laughs> Well, I mean, um, both of my parents are one percenters, so we, we probably could even without the tax help, but the point being that I'm very shocked that these types of things are going on when for a long time, for a long time, at least in the area that I come from, it, it would have been unheard of, especially game shows like these coming from a family where my grandfather was adamantly against school prayer, where he was very much for the separation of church and state, and where he actually supported sex education in the school that his children went to because he, because he felt that in injecting fundamentalism was dangerous for faith and... Well, that is pretty much precisely what happened to his own, to some of his own grandchildren later on down the line. And I thought about these types of game shows thinking, you know, what if somebody, I, are these people going to be more like my grandfather who is very reasonable or like a Mr. Rogers figure who is very kind and open or are they going to introduce crazies from all corners of the country onto the show? And... Would they even just, thinking, just as you said, I was thinking, I wonder if the Westboro Baptist Church are going to put up a team. <laughs> that, that would be absolutely lovely. I, I would enjoy seeing a team, uh, team crazy eyes. Yeah, that would work. But that's all of them, isn't it? <sighs> it is. 
But um, coming from coming from a very religious background, my my grandfather was very reasonable. My grandmother and my father not so much, which is which is primarily what what drove me in a secular direction. And of course, growing up in that type of environment, I know quite a bit about the Bible so much so that I shocked my religious boss the other day by teasing him about how he's going bald at age 26, and then asking him if he was going to get bears to attack me. And he was at, he was floored that I was aware of that reference as a secular person, and I thought you know, there are probably plenty of other people out there like me who come from these types of backgrounds and who are very educated about this type of stuff. And I wonder if they would be allowed on such a show, or if they would be um, censored simply because that's not what the audience wants. Second Kings, I think, isn't it? Yes. Hey, I should be on the team. Hey, you know. But Get a whole bunch male, of YouTube babies to sign up. Did, did you cover this yet? Were they male or female bears? Oh, um, Neph Nephilim has uh, already explained exactly what the position is. They were brown bears and they were female. I, sh I showed <laughs> that video of yours to my boss. He was extremely embarrassed. You showed my video? Yes, I showed your video wow. about about Nephilim Free to well, my I'm, boss. He was, I'm he was shocked Thank and you. embarrassed. Yeah. Oh, I would show that to my grandfather, except he has a pacemaker, and I don't think it's quite his time yet. You should interview him about the the the, the concerns he has. I mean, you know, it's it's always interesting to hear someone talking about a religious person who supports the separation of church and state from from a religious perspective. Even, you know, the the churches stand to gain from a lack of intrusion into their business. Be interested to hear an interview. I, I actually just want to go back to the point um, that you're making that it was your employer because I think that a lot of people, um, certainly a lot of people who've talked to me, uh, they're not in a position to express their atheism at work for fear of uh, reprisals or lack of um, promotion and the like. Uh, that's that's not a problem for you. Um, no, I'm very lucky in that um, I have a part-time job at my university, and of course. Um, of course, I bet it's a little bit more tolerant than people who work in the for-profit sector. And my boss is very understanding and respectful of my beliefs, as I am of his. And we've had a lot of very interesting conversations about it, and it's been very beneficial for both of us. Um, I, I think it really takes people who are a little bit more understanding of these types of things to be able to have mature, grown-up conversations and, um, and not devolve into fights at work. Uh, yes, tolerance is going to be required if we're all going to live together. Um, but there we are. Uh, Shelby, I'd love to carry on talking with you, but uh, unfortunately we've got a few people still lined up. But thank you very much indeed for the call. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Have a great evening. Thank you very much. Hey there. Hi, we've got you. Can you hear me fine? Perfectly. How can we help you? All right. I'm Wondering, I just want to say that I love that you guys ended the last call talking about Nephilim Free. I've been watching a lot of uh, DPRs, Concordances, and Thunderfoots videos on ne Nephilim, and I highly doubt he's a real person. I, I can't believe... I, I, do, do, regardless, I love the, the general broad brown nosing of all of us. I, that's the sort of caller I appreciate. Um, um, you don't think Nephilim's real? free? Spread it, it around. You don't think Nephilim's real? Uh... He's real. I know he's real. I've seen his headphones. I know he's there. But I, I think he's a foe. I, I can't believe that someone... No, can... no, no. Neff no is man. quite on the level. I, I mean, I've, ha I've talked to the man for hours. He is quite, quite on the level. I, I went through the playlist of all the like debate forwarding with Don Exodus. Oh, we'll debate this, we'll debate that. But it's not... I, I can't believe that was really a thing. Like, unbelievable. People like that just can't. I don't know. But that's it's what always, it's always the problem though, when you uh, spend all of your time around sane, sensible people. Is you assume that all people are sane and sensible. <laughs> yeah, I have to say, just, I, I think he he's. I think he's got a, a mental illness. It might be mild, but I, I think he's not entirely functional in society uh, you know that's that's really why i stopped even engaging with them is it, it's it's like kicking someone when they're down uh, guy is hateful full of full of rage 
obviously has some personal issues, and I honestly just think there's something not quite right. He's he's a couple of uh, cards short of a deck. I considered that ever since I saw the evolution paper eating video. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> all right, that's not what I called about though. Uh, a couple of you, I watched the video where you guys uh, the first sight and Bruggen cake and uh, and Bruggen cake. Uh, I can't pronounce his name. Sorry. And uh, the just call him Sai Ten. Yeah, the debate. Did you guys have some sort of semi-formal debate? And I watched the video. And his argument, I I was a. Uh, I'm Listen, sorry, I have to accept that, that that was not any form of debate. It ended uh, up in a, a huge shouting semi, match. <laughs> semi formal discussion. It wasn't really shouting because Iron Rock couldn't. Uh, but. Um, <laughs> normal. That's his uh, normal volume level. Uh, I, I was along, you guys were the, the discussing with him. But as soon as he got to the part where he's like, okay, you guys have a circular logic, it's called. Uh, how do you reason your reasoning is valid? Oh, you reason about it. And I highly disagreed with that. I didn't think that was true at all, but everyone on the panel agreed. They were like, yeah, we do, but that's not, that's not a bad... And I was like, I, I don't think that's... I, I don't think that's true at all. I don't reason about my reasoning. I just reason. It just is. It's a, lot, a cognitive function. I, that's what I think, at least. I mean, I might be wrong. Uh, like, uh, I mean... I, the way I would put it is reasoning is just a methodology that's um, got a track record of producing models with predictive capability. Yeah, I and completely that, agree that's with why, that. That's why we use it. We don't yeah, but reason. You, guys gave him, you guys gave him a free pass to put you inside a circle, a circle logic fallacy where you guys weren't because you don't reason about your reasoning. Well, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure that we did give him a free pass. You did, I you did. I, I, no, I, I think a lot of it is there were a lot of people on that panel, and when someone says something stupid and straw mans you, you don't, you don't each get the chance to sort of jump in and say, uh, no, that's not true, because otherwise, I mean, even if it was, the whole thing graded um, multiple times and fairly severely. I, uh, I completely so, understand that, but you kept going. You kept going to it. You kept pressing it. You guys never, never told. No, that's not circular. We don't reason about it. our reasoning being valid. It just is reason. Reason as uh, how Turner would like to say. Uh, I, 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 hate, I, I really am bad with words, but it, it, it complies with reality. Reason. You can re reason proves itself by being compatible with reality that it, we don't reason about our reasoning and I really hate didn't like that you guys uh, let that one slide and it, it made him being able to go back to that over and over again it made me really frustrated and even concur I'm not sure that I'm fully following your point okay uh, basically you made a point very early on about like and anticipating that you guys would be like oh you're your uh, reasoning is circular because uh, God revealed yourself, himself to you so you know he's real and all that. But he made a preemptive strike on that being uh, that uh, atheist, how do you know your reasoning is valid? Oh, because you reason about it, right? And that's circular. So you're both circular logic. But I, I disagree that reasoning is by itself circular because reasoning just is. It's a cognitive function that has productive capability. I, I, firstly, I don't think that that is actually the point that he made. It, it is. He, he said, yeah, you reason that your reasoning is valid. No, you, he said that you use reasoning to justify your reasoning. Yeah, oh, uh, that's kind of the same. I, I mean, I'm, there may be some subtle difference there, but concordance. I, I, I have to disagree with you. I, the, the, the problem... And, and We've lost your audio concordance. Take a moment. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. We've got you I back. I double clicked the button. Uh, let, let me use the, the matrix example for global skepticism. If you were inside the matrix, how would you know? How would you test your reason against observed reality? Right? It would continue to work no matter what you were presented with because your reasoning would be based on your faulty perceptions of, of what true reality was. So that's, that's why that's probably an unproductive assertion, regardless of where you go with it, you end up with an axiom. You end up with a, a self-evident statement of 
you know, I trust my perception because to do otherwise is madness. You know, there's no, there's nothing productive on the other side of that assertion. But they were using that against us. They were using our honesty against us. And this is an argument that the more honest you are, the more vulnerable you are to this sort of sleight of hand trick of logic. Um, but obviously their position was no different. They also relied on an axiom. And their axiom, when we finally got around to it, was that how do you know that God isn't deceptive? And their answer is, well, we can know that because God tells us so. Then they entered their own their own axiomatic weakness. Um, and I don't know if they, they saw it. I don't know if everyone watching saw it. But they obviously trapped themselves. They were just they were so blunt about it as though they didn't see the problem that you almost think to yourself, what's the point of pointing this out to them? At what, what point does the discussion become so unproductive that it's just not worth even pursuing? I completely agree. Your video where you use the Naturalia and Godlandia example, that was the best video refuting them I have ever seen on YouTube. But uh, uh, thank you. that was very good. I was impressed. That's, that's, videos, that's specific right? brown nosing, and I really appreciate that. I, I know, I know, much. but it's true. It's true. That's how I feel. But uh, what what, they, what what they're doing is uh, they they're trying to pick off the stragglers, as Matt Dillahunty once said. They they want to pick up the the people that can't really discern mild the the seedful propositions, like oh, we're both circular, but at least we have a god, something like that. And you guys gave him kind of like a free pass on that, and I didn't like it. But I know I might be wrong on this, but you, I, I love you guys, and keep doing what you're doing. Oh, uh, don't worry. I mean, our shoulders are broad enough. If we, if we yeah. uh, are wrong, um, we prefer to be told. Um, no, I, I'm not I, saying I, you're wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong. I, I was wondering if I was wrong, so I called in. I mean... I, I when I saw that I I disagree that you let him pass on because he that that's what he built his own is all uh oh we're all we're uh, both circular but at least we have like a third party of circularity that allows us to not be as badly circular as you guys. See, I, I think and, theoretical bullshit could have could have taken them down I, if he had been on the call, and I, I wish he had been. I think he could have probably gotten them to admit to certain things a lot faster and I, I think it would have it would have had a different tone none of us are philosophers that's not what we do I, I don't think that was the problem i think the main problem that call was there were too many people trying to take in too many different directions and that's that true. resulted too, more or less too many, there, there, there were too many people and the idea that we had theoretical there as well and i think that would have made it what eight if not nine at times yeah, I don't, I don't it would have gone have even more crazy else. A good analogy would be a good ana analogy would be you were like five dogs and one piece of meat all fighting for it. You all wanted a piece of them, and it ended up not being very much for anyone. No, it was totally I, I constructive. But the one thing um, I, I I kind of tried to prepare for that show uh, by watching a uh, podcast or listening to a podcast, I should say, by uh, Philosophy Bites, who do some very interesting stuff, and they. Uh, have got a couple of programs on presuppositionalism, um, and the one thing they uh, advice they gave uh, is that if you're ever having a conversation with a presuppositionalist, you have to get aggressive uh, and confrontational from the get-go. Because if you allow them to um, get their foot in the door, so to speak, you're never ever going to recover. And <clears throat> I, 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 I mean, I haven't watched it for a while, uh, and I probably will squirm when I do because I'll see how awful and offensive I was and how I didn't moderate the show at all but I'm pretty certain and my recollection is right that we did challenge um, his, his basic um, uh, axioms and um, presuppositional um, points that he had um, and yet uh, as Concordant says none of us are philosophers I don't I, don't, I simply don't think that you need to be because I, I think there are so many obvious flaws in his argument without being skilled in uh, or, or knowledgeable in philosophy um, that he can be knocked down, but I, 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 I'll go back and watch it again. I, I'm, as I say, I, I'm not sure that we were quite as lenient with him as you suggest that we were, but uh, uh, you were lenient. Well, you were, I think you were only lenient on that specific point, but you let him build up to uh, a later on fallacy where it's like, oh, we're both circular, and that, that single part where you let him talk, let him build up on his entire like later on argument where it's like, 
oh, well, we're both circular, but we have a third party which make us be less viciously circular? I, 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 I suspect that we're all in agreement that we, we, we all start from basic axioms, and I, I suspect they're the same. It's those that um, Thunder uh, mentioned to Eric Hovind um, in uh, DC in March. Um, I don't think you can get around that, um, and I don't think that he actually adds to it by having this third party. I know, I know, I completely agree. But you let him build onto it, and okay. just letting him build, letting letting him build onto like a fallacy is like wrong. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because like he's trying to pick up the people who aren't as intellectually savvy, yeah. if I want to say that, because that that's what they can do, right? They, they can't really do much other than that. Like, yeah. Exactly. On that note, uh, um, well, I'm going to move on. But thank you very much for the call. Yeah.